Hey guys, in this video, we will start designing the database that will be supporting our school management system. Our tool of choice for this exercise will be phpMyAdmin, which you can get to by going to localhost slash phpMyAdmin. And of course, you want to ensure that you have Zamp's server up and running with Apache and MySQL services are currently active. Now, the first step is to go ahead and click new for a new database. You may not have as many as I do, so don't despair if that is the situation. But once we click new, then we see an interface that allows us to build and well, create a database, give it a name. So I'm going to call mine school underscore DB and click create. And then it will ask us what is the first table we want to create. So I'm going to choose users. And yours may not come up like that. My browser is remembering some past things that I did and conveniently it applies. So I'm going to give my users table about eight columns. And then the next screen will require that we put in these columns. So I'm going to zoom out a bit so we can see a little bit more. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to give the first column the name ID leave it at int and then i'm going to tick ai to make it auto incrementing which php my admin will just go ahead and make it the primary key as a result of that next i'm going to have username which i'm going to set as varchar 50. i'm going to have password which will also be varchar with a size of 50. So remember we have the type and then we have the length. Not every data type requires a length. So because varchar is a string, we need a length for it. And then moving on, we have first underscore name, which I'm making varchar and I'll give this one a hundred because I don't know how long a first name might be. And I'm going to have last name also with varchar 100. Uh, next is date of birth, and that one will be of the data type date, which doesn't require length. And then we have profile picture. So we want to allow people to upload an avatar of sorts. And that one I will give 200. And I'm going to have email address. So I didn't, you know, we, we need email address to contact them. And email address can be varchar let's say a hundred and then i think that's it for the users table so of course you can add more elements if you wish of course you'll have to adapt because i won't be working with those additional elements as i go along but you know maybe you'd want to add phone number or address and maybe even a date created column so that you can track when each record went in all right, so those are little things that you probably want to do, but I'll just leave it like this and click go. So actually I'm going to add date created. I think that's a good column to have. So if I wanted to add a new column in the middle of this, then at the top here, they say add column and then I click go. And then that just gives me another row. So I'm going to put in date created and I'm going to give that a date value also. And then when I'm, finished with my design, then I will see save down the bottom here. So I can always preview the SQL if I wanted to see what code it generated, but I'll just go ahead and click save, which will generate the table and allow me to go ahead and either put in data or continue. So I'm going to continue and the next table on the menu would be roles. So I just click new under the already expanded database to my left. And then I'm going to call this one roles. And then the roles table is going to have ID and name, all right? And the name would be Varchar and I'll just say 50. Now for ID, you don't forget to make it auto incrementing and by extension, the primary key. So the roles table is going to store the role of the user. You know, in, in basic systems, you have an admin user versus a, this kind of user and a, that kind of user. In the context of our school management system, we'll probably have three, two or three roles, but we need a table to store the roles themselves. And then we click save 
on that table once we're satisfied. Now we need another table to associate the user with the role. So I'm going to create a new table once again, and then this one is going to be called user underscore roles. Now in this table, I'm just going to have two columns, which will both be foreign keys. So one will be role underscore ID, which will be a foreign key to the roles table, and another one user ID for foreign key to the users table. Uh, of course, they're not going to be auto incrementing because they need to match back by virtue of the fact that they're foreign keys. They have to match back to values in the primary key holding table. All right. So I'm just adding those two and then I click save. And then uh, in the same breath, I'm just going to go ahead and set up the relationship. So I'm going to relation view and then I'm going to create a relationship. I'm going to call this one roles underscore user roles. So this constraint name says, what is this relationship? What is, what, what's, well, it's free text, so you can write anything. I recommend that you write something that is indicative of what it represents. So this is a relationship between the user roles table and the roles table. So I'm saying roles and user roles in the name. So after giving it a name, I need to now add the column. So which column is it that I want to create the relationship for? Since it's the role table, I'm going to use the role underscore ID, which I named to be um, representative of the fact that it's a foreign key to the role table, right? And then the database we're working with is school DB. The table that the relationship is supposed to be to is roles. And then it auto fills the fact that, okay, I know what the primary key is, so it must be ID. And then I click save and that creates that first relationship. And then I'm going to do that again below with another one. So I'm just going to go ahead and create user underscore user roles and repeat that process for the user table. So it's going to be user ID this time, same database, the users table, and the ID column, and then I click save, and then it will do what it needs to do to create that foreign key to the user's table. So now I have the relationship set up between the user roles table and the users table and the roles table. All right. Next up is the courses table. So I'm just going to go ahead and click new, and then the table name this time is courses. So courses was, uh, well, this table is going to store all of the courses or subjects available, right? So any school management system, you have to set up what subjects are there for selection, true? So we go ahead and we create the ID, give it the auto incrementing property. Then we probably have like a course code, you know, like that short code, which is probably like five characters long. So I'm just going to set that to varchar five, All right? And then we have name, which will be the name of the course, the long name, the name that any human would readily understand and uh, the number of credits. So this would be credits, All right? And then credits would be integer and well, we don't need a length for that. So once I do that, I click save and then we have our tables. All right, so we're moving along nicely. Four tables down, a few more to go. The next one would be class. All right, so the class table is going to have an ID. So I'm going to explain what the class table is. So ID auto increment. Now think about it. We have the courses, we have the students, we have the lecturer, sure, but we have a class. So the class is an instance of a subject being offered and being taught by somebody, all right? So we have a class and then what we need to do is have a course ID because one course can be taught in many classes, true? So we have one class which would be like PHP programming, but then we have different people teaching it at different times of the day. Which class for PHP programming are you going to be attending, even though it's the same subject? So we would have set up 
PHP programming as a course, but then we need to set up the classes. So for each class, we need to reference the course ID that is going to be taught. And then I'm going to put in lecturer underscore ID as the person who will be teaching said course. And then lecturer ID really and truly is going to link to the users because our users table based on our design is actually going to be storing everybody, the admin users, the lecturers, the students, everybody, whatever be logging into the system will be stored on their users. But then we'll know them differently because of the roles that they're assigned, because the roles can be admin, student or lecturer. So based on the role that they're assigned, we know which one would be a lecturer. All right. So lecturer ID is really just a foreign key to the user, to the user ID. And you will use application logic to know how to load the data relevant to whoever is logged in and to the class when th that is being created. All right. And then the last column that we need for this table would be time, because then we need to know at what time this course or this class rather is going to take place. And for time, I'm going to actually, well, time, and then the data type that we can use thanks to my SQL is time. So if I scroll down and I go to the date and time category, I'll see that there is a data type called time. And then I can save this. Oh, I didn't put in a table name. So this one would be classes and then I click save. And before we move on, we want to set up the relationships between the classes and the relevant table. So I'll just go to re relation view. And then the first one that I'm going to set up and just to refresh myself of the columns, I'm just going to drill down into the classes table and I see course ID. So I'm going to say course underscore classes. And I'm going to say, I want the course ID in school db and the table it should be related to is the courses table and by extension that id column and i can save that one and i'm going to go ahead and create another one and this one would be for user underscore classes so remember that this relationship now is between the lecturer underscore id and the the user ID in the classes table. Sorry, so I chose classes. I should have said users and ID. So lecturer ID and the user ID from the users table. Once again, we'll be using the application logic to control the flow between these tables. So we click save, and then we would have created our two relationships required for this table. Next up is enrollment. So we have class, we have courses, we have classes, but then we need an enrollment. So an enrollment is an actual student being in the class. So I am a student and I'm doing PHP programming with say Mr. Williams. So the enrollment would be that this student has enrolled in this class. And when we look at the details of the class, we can see which course it is based on this ID and which lecturer is in charge based on that ID. All right, so an enrollment really is just going to have the ID, which once again, auto incrementing primary key, and then a relational, a foreign key, sorry, to the class ID, which is int. And then we will have a student underscore ID, which is also int. So student ID would be similar to the lecturer ID where it's going to link back to the user record that is um, relative to the student who is enrolling. So the table name is enrollments. And then we click save. And then we just go ahead and set up those relationships at the same time. So I'm going to call this one class underscore enrollments. The column that we're setting up is class ID in school DB. And then we want the classes with the ID. And we can actually just add more than one here. So I'm just going to click add constraints and it will just allow me to add another one before we click save. So we don't have to, you know, do it two times. And then 
we're going to add well this one, well student underscore enrollments and then we want the student underscore id school db and once again it's users that would be storing the students so we click save and once we do that we notice that the sql query that is generated is is bigger because now it did both constraints in one go as opposed to one at a time all right so if i go back to school db then i see all of the tables that i've created to support my application so if i wanted to see a visual representation of all the tables and their relationships i can actually do that right here in php my admin by going over to more and then clicking designer and then that would actually bring up what we call an entity relationship diagram. So every system has its own version of this pretty much. Um, but then, you know, this one is kind of showing all the lines. So each line represents a relationship between the tables. So I'm just trying to, you know, reorder these so it's, you know, a bit easier to read and track who is related to what and where. All right, so you can see all of these blue lines. These represent the relationships to the users table. We have this purple or magenta line that school the rows to the user rows, and then we have the courses relating to this. So everything, you know, all of those constraints and relationships that we just created created these lines. So the lines are the visual representations of those constraints. All right, so that's it for us designing the database, at least for now. Maybe as we go along, we'll see a change or think of something new that we need to add to the database to modify it. But for now, this is the database that we're working with. And once again, this is local to our machine. So when we reach the stage where we want to publish the internet, we'll know that we need to actually migrate the database from our local instance running on our machine to a more remote instance that the internet can actually get to. All right, so stay tuned and we have more exciting tasks coming up.